Uh, hi guys, today I want to look at a lineup of anamorphic lenses from Zeroe and show you guys a short film that I shot entirely using these lenses. Uh, I recently reviewed the latest release from Zeroe, which was their 24mm lens, and I've gotten a lot of questions regarding which of the Zeroe lenses is the best or which lens I should get. Uh, the 24mm or the 35mm or maybe the original 50mm lens. Well, I think if you want to shoot in anamorphic, you will need all three of these lenses and perhaps more. Just as a disclaimer, this video is not paid for by Zeroe. Uh, in fact, the sponsor today is Storyblacks. Uh, so I wanted to give a big thanks to Storyblacks for that and also for helping me during the making of the short film that I will be using as an example. Uh, while editing the film, I actually end up using some stack footage from Storyblacks to help speed up the whole project, which uh, I'll talk about later. So, Ciroui's lineup of these three anamorphic lenses means that finally we can shoot a whole project with real anamorphic optics on a low budget and using various mirrorless cameras. Uh, like I mentioned in the reviews of each of these lenses, they are all small and light, which means that when working on small productions where time and crew is limited, uh, you'll be able to move faster. Since the lenses and the cameras you can use are smaller, it means you don't need big support gear, uh, such as big tripods or gimbals. Uh, also, since these work on a lot of different mirrorless cameras, it means that they are now accessible to a lot more indie filmmakers who don't own a big cinema camera with a PL amount. Uh, most mainstream anamorphic lenses are big, heavy, and therefore require a sturdy mount like PL. Uh, also, most anamorphic lenses are very expensive and very hard to find. Uh, I found that these three lenses cover the most needed focal lengths. The 50mm lens is a great all-around lens that works for mediums and close-up shots. Uh, like in this scene, where we needed to get a medium shot, uh, and that was done on the 50mm lens. What in the mother's devil? You hate it. Um, do you have hats? Now, in contrast, you can compare the wide shot, which was done on the 24mm lens. As you can see, it's a big difference in the coverage that these two lenses provide. The 35mm lens is a nice in-between focal length that allows you to get a bit wider, but without having that wide-angle look. Now, uh, I've seen some people complain online that the 24mm serial lens isn't wide enough. Uh, what I think they don't realize, however, is that this is an anamorphic lens. So, an anamorphic 24mm lens is not the same as a standard spherical 24mm lens. Uh, anamorphic lenses don't just produce a wider aspect ratio on your final shot, which could just simply be done by putting a black widescreen bars on top and bottom of your shot. Uh, anamorphic lenses actually squeeze the image horizontally onto the image sensor, which later on in post results in a wider aspect ratio uh, once that shot is de-squeezed. Uh, if you want to learn in depth how anamorphic optics work, then I suggest you watch my ultimate anamorphic guide. Link is in the description. So if we look at this 24 millimeter anamorphic lens from Ciroe, which has 1.33 times squeeze aspect ratio, it means that horizontally it can capture more of your scene by squeezing it. Uh, that results in a lens that has more or less uh, the horizontal field of view of an 18mm spherical lens, while vertically it is still a 24mm lens. So even though vertically the field of view isn't bigger, which is also why we end up with the black bars on top and bottom, uh, horizontally it is actually a pretty wide-angle lens. Uh, in the end, these three lenses will allow you to go from a wide-angle shot to a medium and a medium close-up. Uh, of course, as Siri keeps on releasing more lenses, uh, the coverage will allow us to go even tighter or maybe even wider. But, like I said before, I already find that these three lenses cover the most important focal lengths. Uh, if you follow the link in the description to the short film that I shot with these three lenses, uh, you will see that all of these lenses match up nicely in terms of the color rendition and the anamorphic artifacts they create. Hey ladies, uh, I'm actually on Sarah's live stream and I was wondering, are you going to be taking your top off? <laughs> uh, the, the way that these lenses breathe when rack focusing 
It reminds me a lot of those vintage anamorphic lenses that were used in many classic films. I love how these lenses uh, just in general look, the way that they bloom and, and the way that they flare with that anamorphic horizontal flare that is noticeable but not digital looking. Uh, in fact, all of these lenses have a nice organic look, even though they are pretty sharp when compared to many other anamorphics. Uh, these are fast lenses that can also produce a shallow depth of field when used wide open. Now, I've never actually used them wide open on this particular film because uh, this isn't the kind of a look that I was going for. Uh, this is a short film comedy that has clean and brightly lit shots. Uh, but if you guys want to get shallow depth of field, you definitely can. We shot this film on the Blackmagic Packet 4K cameras. Uh, these, of course, have a micro four-thirds image sensor, which is a lot more cropped in than many other mirrorless cameras. Uh, so if you up to get these lenses in, let's say, the Sony E-mount or, or one of the other available mounts, uh, then your shots will be even wider. Now, like I mentioned earlier, today's sponsor, which is Storblax, came in real handy when I was finishing up this short film. Uh, we knew from the beginning that some of the shots needed to look like they were shot on a phone uh, and were streaming on social media. These were also the only shots where we used standard spherical lenses. Now, originally I wanted to create some graphic elements that I would add to these shots, but when editing this project with limited budget and time, uh, I just couldn't make it happen. Uh, then I remember that I have a subscription to Storyblack, so I figured I'd search their stock library. Uh, they actually have a lot of different graphics to choose from. Uh, some are customizable templates that allow you to change the text or color size and so on. Uh, I actually use these animated graphic videos that were ready to be laid on top of my shots. Uh, also, while browsing their website, I remembered I needed some sound effects, so I done downloaded a few that I ended up using in the film. Uh, in fact, Storyblocks has an impressive collection of 4K stack footage, uh, graphics, sounds, and even music that cover a wide range of topics. Uh, they also offer unlimited downloads. Uh, plus, all the clips are royalty-free for both personal and professional use. Uh, if you are working on a project where you might need some extra shots, graphics, or, or sounds, then definitely check out Storyblacks using the link in the description of this video. So, in short, which of these anamorphic lenses is the best and which one should you get? Uh, I guess if you can only afford to get one right now, then I would first start with the 50mm lens. But eventually I suggest that you get all of them if you want to have the options for different angles and framing in your videos. Uh, also, keep an eye out for the next lens that Siri will be releasing. Uh, according to them, it will most likely be a longer lens, uh, so something about 50mm focal length. I myself will try to get it early for testing so I can again show you guys how it looks and works. Uh, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know. Plus, uh, don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter at tomantosfilms.com uh, so we can keep in touch. Uh, see you in the next video.